Welcome back, Twisters. Today we're going to be talking about the San Jose Sharks offseason as it pertains to forwards. So the way this is going to work, we're going to look at some statistical information from last year, some of the uh, disappointing performances that we saw on offense, and then start to look at some potential free agents the Sharks could, could uh, target during the offseason and how they would potentially build out their forward combinations after that. So We'll get into that in just a second, but remember, if you haven't already, do check out our 1K jersey giveaway that's going on right now. Enter by September 12th, and if you don't know what the heck that is, and if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit the red subscribe button and the notifications bell. That way you stay in the loop regarding uh, cool content like that. So anyway, guys, without further ado, let's dive into this. Remember, I've already done a video like this on the Sharks as it pertains to coaching, one on goaltending, and a video on defensemen as well. So let's get into it, my friends. So... On the season, the San Jose Sharks tied for 27th in goals for average. Can you believe that, guys? They also had the fourth lowest total when it comes to even strength 5v5 goals. This team, uh, the year before that, I think they were tied for second in goals for. So, whew, we, we did miss Joe Pavelski quite a bit, but maybe, maybe there's even more to that story. Uh, they were 23rd on the power play. They were 26th in shots for. Tied for 24th in faceoff percentage, tied for 23rd in their win percentage in which they outshoot their opponents. So in other words, they were probably a better team when they were outshot in games. They were tied for 16th in penalty minutes drawn. They were only 15 and 20 when they were outshooting their opponents. They had the second most losses in the league. Only Detroit had more. They only had an 8.6 shot percentage. The league average is 9.5. So... Look at the 18-19 season. The Sharks' shot percentage then was 10.7, so over two percentage points better two seasons ago. Their scoring chances, that was 60 below the league average of 1,281. They had 19 more high danger chances than the league average of 203, so that means that their high danger conversion percentage wasn't all that great. They were fifth in overall takeaways, which was good, and they had the 10th fewest giveaways. So pretty responsible with the puck right there. And they lost a lot of players, you know, going into this past season. So Joe Pavelski, of course, Jonas Donskoy, uh, Gustav Nyquist, and they had traded away Marlowe and Goodrow during the course of the season. They also lost Hurdle. They lost Couture for two stretches there. So overall, as you probably remember, unfortunately, a uh, pretty disastrous year for this team. So... Let's look at these drop-offs that we saw from some of those core forwards right there. So Logan Couture, as I mentioned, he had a couple of injury problems. You know, in an 82-game season, he's usually good for about 29 goals, 62 points. So, yeah, maybe that tails off just a little bit uh, when you look at this next year. But, God, if Logan's healthy, he's he's quite the asset out there. So, again, I, I think that collectively these Sharks are going to see a bit of an uptick in points, but the thing is that they can't rely on that to put them as far ahead as they were two seasons ago offensively. So, uh, Timo Meyer, he's not quite 24 years old. He had 21 goals in his first season as a Shark. Then that went up to 30 in 18-19, but he dipped back to 22 this year. So, a bit of a regression there. He's got that potential to still be a 30-goal scorer, more or less. So, he was a guy who had down near, even though he led the team in scoring, oddly enough. Uh, Tomas Hurdle, another guy who really reached his potential in 18-19. He put up 74 points in 77 games, was terrific during the playoffs as well until he got hurt. So Hurdle, I think that that's, that's the Tomas Hurdle. That's the Hurdle that we know could definitely be uh, a core piece of this franchise going forward. Um, but yeah, he's usually good for, on average, maybe about... 55, 60 points. He was he was on pace to be at a 60 point pace uh, this season. So he's I think the best Sharks forward out there, uh, and he can do a lot. He's a very versatile player. He can win faceoffs and do a good job uh, controlling possession in that sense. So again, I expect a little bit more from from him this past or this upcoming season. Evander Kane he actually had one of the more stable seasons when you look at his goal output. He led the team with uh, 26 goals and. He even missed a few games due to suspension there. So this guy would have been a 30-goal scorer. He was the 30-goal scorer of the previous season, uh, his first full season with the Sharks there. So I'm not as worried about him. It's just that he's a very hot and cold player. He can you know, score 12 goals over a seven-game stretch, and then he could score two goals in a 22-game stretch. So I, d I think that's just kind of what you get with Evander Kane, but I'm not as worried about his production going forward. Uh, Kevin LeBanc had 56 points in... 
the 18-19 season, but that dipped a ton this past season. It's not so much his goal scoring, and it's not the fact that he's turning over the puck or that he's not shooting, because if you look at his turnovers, he you know, saw that dip down uh, versus Pat the past uh, previous season. His shots were career high as well. So, you know, he actually played better than I give him credit for it. If you look at those numbers right there, but his assists were down a ton. And I think that that's just a sign of the Sharks not finishing overall or creating, well, they did have all the high danger chances. So I can't necessarily point the finger at LeBanc as much as I thought I could. So you're off the hook, Kevin. Uh, Marcus Sorensen, 18-19, played third line minutes. And he had scored 17 goals. That's really nice for the third line. But he didn't have as much success this previous season. Only had seven goals. Even though he had another minute added to his ice time, more or less, just wasn't generating those chances five on five. So I don't know with him. He's he's coming into a contract year. So in 18-19, he earned that two-year extension by scoring a bunch of goals early on. Maybe we'll get that again. And maybe it depends on who he's playing with. So... Looking at the Sharks' cap situation now. So they're at about $14 million remaining going into uh, the offseason. So they just signed Yoel Shellman to a 750 k deal. So nice value contract right there. A little bit of depth for the fourth line, potentially. And they also have uh, a draft pick in the first round from Tampa. So that's going to be very late in the draft. A second round pick from Colorado. But they don't have a third, they don't have a fourth, and they don't have a sixth. So that late round value that the Sharks are known for getting. Uh, You know, if you think of guys like uh, Joe Pavelski, for example, well, anyway, this team doesn't have that this time around. Not that that would necessarily translate into having a forward ready to join the roster this year. Let's look at some of these UFAs for the Sharks here. So $2 million Joe Thornton was making. He just turned 41 years old. So he's a UFA. Uh, He has said in the past he wants to keep playing. Uh, he's even though his points had had dipped from 18 19 like they did for everybody else he still had 34 points i mean that's nothing to scoff at for uh for 40 year old i mean so he's still going to make the case that he should be on an nhl team and it's just weird to think of him not being in a sharks uniform anyway so with thornton and with a couple other players it's going to be really up in the air whether or not the sharks going to have cap space for them so kevin lebank was making just a million dollars as many of you know he didn't really have the point totals that would justify earning all that much more. I mean, he could make upwards of, I think, $3 million, but in terms of making that four or maybe even four and a half million that he could have had if he had another 50, 50, 60 point season, I just don't see that happening. But nonetheless, the Sharks, they should be able to work out some sort of deal with him because otherwise, who's going to score goals as a right handed shot for the Sharks? There's nobody else. I'll talk about that later, too. Melker Carlson, he's 30 years old. He has been making $2 million the past three seasons. So it's uncertain whether or not they can afford to, to uh, re-sign him. Of course, he adds a lot of value in terms of penalty kill. He's a very durable player as well. Stefan Nason, 27 years old. He was making 700 k And I think that if you talk to Sharks fans, he was probably consistently uh, the most reliable forward uh, night in, night out for this team. Not, not too flashy when it comes to point production, but nonetheless... I mean, as long as he's on the roster, it's Hakuna Matata, baby. Uh, Auntie Suomela, he was making 700 k He's 27 years old. Frankly, he wasn't used that much last season. I don't think the Sharks are really going to have a spot for him coming up here. Some other RFAs that you have include Jonathan Dolan, uh, Jaden Hobgawax, and Maxime Latunov, who I will touch on later. You also got to remember that Patrick Marlowe is out there. It seems like his family is uh, assuming he's going to keep playing. He's, he's 40 years old, turns 41 in October. Um, but yeah, he was making only 700 with the Sharks. So I think that there's a chance he could find his way back in Teal. And if he plays all of next season, he would break Gordie Howe's all-time games played record. Unbelievable. So what I see here is that the Sharks, they're in need of a couple of pieces. Most notably, when it comes to forwards, they need a forward who can play in the top six and who shoots right-handed. I I have to stress that because look at it this way, guys. Kevin LeBanc led all right-handed scoring forwards with 14 goals. Who came after him? Melker Carlson with six. The Sharks need a right-handed shot. So they need one of those guys for the top six, and they also need a third-line center because you look at Couture and Hurdle. Who comes after them, right? There are a number of guys you can throw into that mix for the fourth line, but I don't see a a bona fide third line center for this team. So those are the two biggest needs for this team. 
Uh, looking at it this way, guys, looking at my previous videos, they had 14 million, you know, going into the off season for, for overall cap. I projected they wouldn't spend anything on a goaltender. Let's say they bring in a guy to, uh, you know, compete for a spot, a Louis Domingue or a Keith Kincaid or something like that on just, you know, league minimum or something. Then when you look at defense, I think the Sharks are better set when it comes to defense. They need to find somebody who's going to play that six defenseman role or maybe slot in as a second pairing, possibly. And that's even pulling some strings. I made the case for Michael Stone being signed to play with Mario Ferraro on the third pairing. You can maybe even see a guy like Mark Pissick or Trevor Van Riemsdyk get signed in the offseason, but either of those contracts would be under $3 million right there. So now we're looking at as much as, much as maybe $4 million taken away. So we're at $10 million remaining. I recommend they resign Stefan Nason and Maxime Latunov. I, I think that Latunov was the you know leading point getter for the Barracuda, or at least in terms of uh, points per game. I don't think those guys make combined more than two million dollars next year. So that leaves eight million dollars for these two forwards that I was just mentioning right here: someone to play in the top six who shoots right-handed, and a third-line center. So that brings us to our available UFAs. I'm not going to talk about any RFAs. Um, from other teams. So let's start with the uh, the center position, by the way. I think that's probably better. So a couple of guys who I saw out there, all right, if you want the bargain contract, you can go to Tyler Ennis, a 30-year-old who had a lot of success early on in his career with the Sabres, and he looked pretty good for the Senators this past season. But other than that, he's had a lot of injury troubles. Uh, yeah, just $1.22 million for his contract this past season, but he doesn't take face-offs. So for a team that needs someone who's good in the faceoff circle, who lost Barkley Goodrow, for example, I don't know if he's the guy. Um, Craig Smith, if you want pure offense, he would be the guy, right? He's scored uh, 20 goals five times in his career, and he would have done it this past season as well. Um, he's scored 50 points twice in a season. His shot percentage isn't amazing, but he puts a lot on goal, so he's generating a lot of offense out there. But he was making $4.25 million this past season. I don't know if that's quite justified. Not quite for a guy who's now entering his 30s. Uh, he's about to be 31 years old. So he would maybe need to take a pay cut. This is kind of one of those things where if the Sharks hired Peter LaViolette as their head coach, maybe then Craig Smith gets a look. A couple other options, all right? So Matthias Janmark, uh, uh, $2.3 million. I think he's 27 years old and he's playing center for the Dallas Stars right here. Here's the thing. He doesn't take faceoffs, or at least not currently on the Stars. And he scored 15 goals in his first season, followed by a 19 goal season after that. But he's only scored a total of 12 goals the past two seasons. So I don't know if they're going to get quite the value that they're looking for. He's more of a, I don't know, a utility center. He's not as much, uh, you know, for, for firepower. So $2.3 million, still not a bad contract, but I would much rather pay for Eric Howla. I think Howla is the best bet out there if you're looking for UFA centers. $2.75 million over the past couple of years. Had a monster season for Vegas like everybody else. But even after that, uh, I know that he had a terrible uh, injury to overcome in 1819, but in 1920, he was basically putting up a point every other game. He's excellent in the face-off circle. He's been deployed earlier in his career more so in defensive situations and has been very good too. So I think he's he's a player that at 29 years old, he could be snatched up by the Sharks for maybe about 3.25 million right there. And I'd rather you know invest in those centers, right? This is a center dominant league. If you looked at the Sharks, if they were to possibly deploy Couture, uh, Hurdle, and then Howla as their centers, things start to look a bit better. So I really like Howla. I think the Sharks should be very aggressive in pursuing him because the other options, you don't you don't get the full package like you do with Howla. So I, I, I definitely will sing the praises for him. Now let's look at the wingers. And again, if you're looking for a guy who is under the age of 32, who can shoot right-handed, you know, and I, and I do stress, the Sharks are an old team. So they need to get younger or at least bring in guys who are still kind of in their primes. So really, we have two options here, guys. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty slim pickings. So first guy I want to talk about, Tyler Toffoli, kind of the big fish, right? So he's been making $4.6 million uh, over the past, I think, three seasons. Um, I could see that contract going up to maybe as much as $5.25 million. So this, this is a guy who has scored 30 goals before. It's been a while. But nonetheless, he's a 
you know, 20 to 25 goal scorer easily. Uh, he's played top six minutes, and he certainly would on the Sharks, I think. But uh, at 5.25 million, that'd be it'd be tough to kind of squeeze that with uh, a contract like Howell's as well. Um, not to mention if you need to to resign one or two other of the RFAs. So. 45, 50 point guy, perhaps. He knows the Sharks very well, having played in the Pacific Division his whole career. And I know that he's playing in Vancouver right now, but the cap situation could be a little tight there, right? So if he's looking for other places to play, I think the Sharks would be right up his alley. And I'll certainly give this as a talking point because I grew up with his wife, actually, uh, when we were kids. We lived on the same street. And as you guys know, I grew up just an hour away from Sharks territory. So Who knows, maybe that's a bit of a selling point for them as well. They're back in California, maybe they'd like that. So Tyler, you've you've got a spot with the Sharks, man. If if you can uh, negotiate a little bit, we've got a home for you. The other guy I want to talk about who's kind of sliding in under the radar is Jesper Faust, who was playing for the Rangers there, played on a pretty good third line, uh, was making $1.85 million, 28 years old. He's a guy who can give you 30 points, maybe even more. Uh, good defensive efficiency numbers. He can play very physical, and he's a great shot blocker too. So I think that he's probably one of the best bargains on the free agent market, having looked at all the UFAs out there. I would love for the Sharks to bring this guy on. If they don't want to um, you know, spend nearly as much as to, on as they would on Toffoli, they could possibly sign Foss. They would still have plenty of room for Eric Halla, and then they could even bring back a combination of, you could bring back Patrick Marlowe to play on the fourth line. Or you could bring back Joe Thornton for another option at center. You could even bring back Melker Carlson if he takes, you know, a a little bit of a pay cut and is your uh, defensive specialist or your penalty killing specialist. So let's look at a couple of situations here, guys. So when it comes to the bottom six, I'm pretty damn clueless still, but I'll give some, some projections here. So here's one thing you could do, right? So let's say the Sharks, they don't sign anybody on defense. Let's say, okay. We're going to have, you know, uh, Tim Heed back or Nick D. Simone come in or Trevor Carrick or I-, I gave a couple other predictions in the other video. So it's possible the Sharks could go without signing a defenseman in the offseason, I think. Not necessarily the best of, of their interests, but I think it's possible. So here's my projections for the forwards then. So first line, Couture, Kane, Toffoli. That's pretty good. That's 30 goal scoring potential with every position there. Let's look at the second line here. So Hurdle with LeBanc and Timo Meyer is now slotted down with them. So Hurdle and Meyer on the same line, that is beastly right there. That's even 35 goals between the, you know, for each of them, possibly. You know, we're looking best case scenario, of course. And LeBanc, maybe he flourishes with, with those talents around him. Third line would be Eric Howla, Marcus Sorensen, and I'm going to say Stefan Nason. Now, Nason, he's not maybe the best pick for the uh, third line. I had another idea for that, but here's my fourth line, okay? Maxine Latunov, who led the Barracuda in points per game, along with Yoel Shellman, who again, I think was a very good utility player and at least was generating buzz in the offensive zone. And let's put Joachim Blickfeld out there as well. Blickfeld, he's very familiar with Latunov having played, um, you know, with the Barracuda this past season. So he had some decent numbers as well there. I think he had 16 goals, 16 assists in 42 games. So I'd like to see uh, Blickfeld get a little bit more uh, time with the Sharks in this upcoming season. I think that he's probably one of the more touted prospects who might be ready for that uh, this upcoming season. So I think that's that's actually looking pretty good. I mean, if we get Sorensen from two seasons ago with 17 goals on that third line with Howla, Nason... I think that he could feed off of that as well. And then you look at this other uh, set of forwards, possibly. So let's say the Sharks go a little bit more economical with things. Let's say they, they're like, okay, we don't have $5 million to spend on Toffoli, okay? We do have money maybe to sink into a Trevor Van Riemsdyk on the back end. You know, maybe free up space for Thornton. Maybe free up space for Marlowe. So I'm just going to throw in some, some uh, possible pairings here or some uh, forward combinations. So, top line, Couture, Kane, Meyer, okay? Something we saw more of last year. Second line would be this. I'm going to I'm going to stack the the top 6. Let's say Eric Howla stays in but as the second line center with Tomas Hurdle as a winger. 
because he can he can do that, and Kevin LeBanc. So now the top six still looks pretty scary, or at least it looks pretty legitimate in my opinion. I think Howla is best case on the second or on the third line, excuse me. But nonetheless, this guy is fantastic in the faceoff circle. So why not give him a shot at second line? Third line, let's say Jumbo Joe Thornton, he's rested. He's like, okay, I had an extended offseason. I'm going to get back to those 50 points I put up in 18-19. And Marcus Sorensen is going to do that with me as well. And then you put Jesper Faust, you know, an energetic, physical forward with a right shot on that line as well. Let's say Jesper Faust nets 15 goals with Joe Thornton out there. It's possible. And then your fourth line would be Latunov. Let's say Patrick Marlowe comes back right, and scores 12 goals on that fourth line, and then you can have uh, interchangeably Nason or Shellman. So now, guys, there are so many other players who could be part of this, like Alex True, he could be part of this. Uh, Sasha Shmeljevsky, for all I know, could, could be part of this. Frederick Handemark, he was uh, signed the same day that we heard of um, Alexei Melnichek being signed as a goaltender. So Really, there are so many uncertainties with this four group. But I think the Sharks, if you look at their cap situation, they do have a chance to at least fill a couple of those voids. I really like Esper Foss for this team. Uh, I think that he's a very affordable contract. And I think Eric Howla, is, uh, he would be a nice uh, stabilizer, I think, for that bottom six if they were able to keep him there as a third line center. But anyway, I want to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you think the Sharks have a shot at some of those free agents I talked about? Or do you think they'd actually pr uh, rather prioritize a guy like Yevgeny Dononov or maybe even Mike Hoffman? <laughs> yeah, legendary San Jose Shark, right? Anyway, guys, I'm curious to know your thoughts down in the comments below. Make sure that you check out my other videos on the San Jose Sharks. Make sure you check out my giveaway if you haven't entered that already. And join the Twist Brigade if you haven't. Be happy to have you along as a subscriber, whether or not you're a Sharks fan, because I do talk about all 32 NHL teams. Anyway, guys, hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Ciao.